Uh, Veronika Wienhuis is the founder of Equal Salary, the certification uh, of equal compensation for women and men, established in 2010 as a non-profit foundation. Uh, the Equal Salary certification process has been developed in collaboration with the University of Genova. Uh, Lenk Veronik, uh, hello Veronik, and uh, uh, the stage is yours, Lenka and Veronik. Veronique, it's my great honor to be leading this talk with you today. Uh, we, we know how the journey you took ahead of us uh, in this complicated realm called equal pay. Uh, that is something that we, we really welcome greatly. And uh, I'm glad that we are doing this connection today with you. And uh, we have a chance to get navigated by your experience. So let's start it, let's get into it. Um, Equal Salary Foundation, why did you start it back in 2005? Well, why did I start it? Well, because um, I'm a, I'm a, I've always been an entrepreneur and uh, I'm an economist at the base. I studied economy at the University of Geneva. And uh, at some point, in my life uh, of, of, of a woman, um, I realized that you know this this money issue and that gender pay gap was not going anywhere. Um, and then uh, because uh, I realized that something was needed because on one hand you had companies that said they have equal pay, they do of course have equal pay, wrongly, correctly. The problem is then. For companies, for employees, whom to believe? Statistics that shows that that the real equal pay was not a reality, or, or the employers. And uh, usually, uh, it's more that uh, it's much more difficult for employers to communicate in that environment. And thus, I um, the need I decided to that there was a need for such a complex issue to come up with uh, I would say uh, a, a practical, scientific. Um, and recognized tool. And this idea of a certification, uh, which uh, companies are familiar with, uh, to take away this emotional side of, uh, of that subject, come down, you know, that even, I could even say doubly emotional, equality and wages, and, uh, you know, come up with this certification, which is as, as business, as business-like as it, they can be, uh, for companies to actually, you know, check that they do have equal pay and then uh, promote it to um, c communicate about it for to attract and retain talent, but also for good governance. And um, really focused on, on equal pay versus equal opportunities, because um, we believe that equal pay is really the fundamental. It's the hardest, actually, uh, and I'm sure you all realize, it is the hardest step for companies to take. It's the strongest action a company can take. It takes courage for a company to, to do that. And because of that, it is we, we say we, it's foundational. Any companies that really takes that su the subject of gender equality seriously should actually start by checking if, whether they do have equal pay. And uh, with what we did, you know, we are the, a third party for companies to actually check. We work with recognized partners, such as um, the University of Geneva. We have developed the, 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 the methodology with them because they use a methodology that has been retained by the Swiss federal court, which brought a lot of credibility. We have worked with, um, from the beginning, with Société Générale de Surveillance, SGS, it's a certification body, the world leader in certification and inspection. And we have also been uh, financially supported by the Swiss government, uh, the Federal Office of Gender Equality. Equal pay is a priority for them since, uh, for Switzerland since a long time. And they have supported us financially to develop the project. Nowadays, uh, we uh, do that with uh, PwC as a main partner. What I want to add, is that um, equal, while we talk about equal pay, and we, uh, we have two steps in the certification. One is, is quantitative. We do salary analysis 
and we have uh, requirements that company that get certified should have less than 5% gender pay gap within the company. But we also do, uh, yes, 5% less. And we also do, uh, we also then, if company has less than 5%, there is an audit, which is actually very important because not only we ask for top management to show the, the commitment, but we ask for companies to have uh, HR processes that are well deployed, well implemented. And this is a key aspect because this is to address indirect discrimination, which directly hit women. Because this is to address the glass ceiling. This is where we can actually check that promotion, that uh, any, you know, anything that actually impl impact the progression uh, and the, the wages is done as objectively as possible. And it diffuses biases and it addresses uh, stereotypes. I want to insist on that because this is really the broad subject of equal pay. Thank you. This was a very thorough introduction to the certification that you do. I think that uh, we have some highlights to take away from this. One, 5%, ladies, 5% is the tolerance line for the Swiss certification system, right? 5% gender pay gap. Uh, I just to say that, want to say that Logip, the tool that I mentioned before in my speech, also has this 5% line, but it's, uh, it's not bind to any process or any um, any governmental anything. It's a voluntary thing for companies to see. So uh, let's see where, uh, where the future takes us, the future years. And next thing I want to highlight from your, uh, from your speech is equal pay versus, or not versus, but uh, equal pay as a key and equal opportunities as something that surrounds the hard thing. The soft thing, equal opportunities and equal pay as the core. And I think this is a revolutionary thought because uh, here I feel that a bit we are still trying to work on equal opportunities as the principle that takes us to equal pay. And what you're saying is quite the opposite, right? Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, you know what? My next question would be uh, that I often hear various people say that uh, if a woman is a professional, well-trained, has degrees, maybe from prestigious universities, has experience and knows what she wants, there shouldn't be a problem to achieve success today anymore. Uh, the results will speak for her. So what do you think from your very long-term experience? Isn't the equality talk just an artificial problem? What do you actually answer to these people? Because I'm sure you are hearing this as well. Yes, of course. And I, I, you know, I, I would say that if it was the case, then you know, exactly, it would be just an artificial problem. And yet we know it is somehow, uh, the world is still not equal. We ask a lot from uh, women. They have to, and we put a lot on, on women's shoulder. I think this is really where we need to stand up and be brave and just, you know, we're not fixing women. It's a system. It's, it's the result of many years. It's a system that has been, let's face it, companies have been, um, has been created mostly by men with a, a masculine, a male culture. And um, this is really what uh, we are confronted now with cultures, companies are working on, on, on changing their culture because they also realize that, you know, if they want to attract uh, talent, both male and female, they need to actually uh, evaluate, they need to, to, to change and uh, otherwise they will just not attract uh, the, 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 the necessary talent. So, for me, it is really about, you know, don't blame the woman, do not, uh, as, we, as they say in English, there's this expression, uh, don't fix the woman. This is not about women. This is really about companies integrating, um, including, uh, the, the, you know, making sure that everybody feels 
comfortable in a company. Wow, that's also something to take away. Don't blame the woman. It's the system that should be changed. It's not our individual mm -hmm. problem. You know, do you think that uh, women stand for themselves enough? Should they learn how to be more confident, more assertive, stand up for themselves? You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. And I think we I think we women are actually quite standing up for ourselves. I mean, look at, at look at we are well, how many? About 70 women in red here and saying out and loud that you know uh, things have to change. No, I do think women do actually. I mean, there are look. Uh, nowadays, there are as many students, uh, female students as um, male students. I mean, those they are good students. They, have, they are proving that they can do it. More and more women are, are taking um, charge in companies. The thing is, uh, again, it's up to companies to make sure that uh, they, they, they can actually take their position. I do believe that, of course, we are all responsible. We are all responsible of our life and it is our responsibility, individual responsibility to do as, as well as possible. But also we have to make sure we feel comfortable in those environments and feel and find the environments that will recognize us as such. This is also why I created Equal Salary because I believe that a company that does uh, a certification, it's because they want to show respect to the employees and they want to generate trust among the, 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 the male and female employees. And I believe, and this is true for men too, men employees too, I believe that in a company that is certified, women feel recognized for what they deserve. They get what they, they get the salary, they, they get the, 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 the wages, that, uh, the remuneration that they deserve. And they feel they are entitled, you know, to voice, they, to raise their voice, to speak up, to say whatever has to say. And it is true also for men. You know, it's funny. Once I was in a conference on, on job sharing, actually, uh, in, uh, in Geneva, and there was, again, this thing about women lack uh, confidence. And then there was this man next to me turning to me and he said, well, this is ridiculous. Men do feel it too. But actually, we don't voice it because we're shy about that. So, you know, this is something to take away too. <laughs> How do you think we should actually deal with this professionally? What it will bring us if we take this whole problem into the professional world, into work, into the job world? Um, I think, you know, it's, again, it's about the culture of the company. It, it, You know, if people feel, uh, employees feel they can actually raise the issue, they can voice the vulnerability, they can, you know, they, they feel secure to speak up. Then, of course, you know, it generates trust. Um, and um, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a, a, a virtuous cycle. Right? The, the more you, 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 you give space to that, the more comfortable the people feel, the, the bigger people can become, right? Because they feel safe. This is really why, you know, it, there's no magical wine, wand on anything. Equal salary, you know, if the culture doesn't um, facilitate that, it's just uh, almost, I would not say a tick in the box because we go so deeply, it's so demanding. And yet still, it's not, uh, once I had a, a company call me saying, you know, a certified company saying, look, um, we promoted a, a woman to a higher position. I mean, we promoted a, a woman and she doesn't accept it. And um, well, and I challenged the, 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 the HR person that was calling me and I said, well, do you think you have the company that act, the type of culture that actually give her the confidence that she can accept? that she won't, you know, be pushed back as soon as there is something that doesn't work the way they think it should go. Maybe this is why she doesn't feel entitled and it's up to you as a company to actually give her the means to accept and feel that she's being supported behind. And this is how things can be achieved in a, in a positive way. You are getting thumbs up from uh, the audience here for what you're saying uh, it's also big words and uh, this is actually what i was trying to to say uh in my speech before about opening the cards of pay let's play open cards with people 
because women have not been trained and brought up uh, in a way that uh, is favorable to the job market. Yes, how it's made today. But you know what? We are actually facing very special and crazy current situation right now in Europe and worldwide. Uh, it's all about COVID. And uh, I have a question for you. What do you think? about uh, this time and how uh, how it will it will change the scene do you think that equal pay will remain on the agenda of companies well our experience uh, I, I, from where I, I am in switzerland luckily um, finally <laughs> after many years of uh, trying uh, and and it's a priority in switzerland since many years for the government uh, a law passed last year was in uh, came into um, into um, ac uh, activity. Let's say it like that. On the first of July, uh, companies in Switzerland have to do a salary analysis, which is just the first step. But nevertheless, they have to do that. There are no sanctions, but nevertheless, the law is there. And in Switzerland, thanks to that, I think now it, the question, even though there's a crisis, it cannot be ignored. Um, I know, I mean, throughout the world, the pressure is really mounting. Uh, and I believe actually the biggest pressure is really coming from everyone, uh, from the people, from the streets. I mean, we've seen the pressure on gender equality. We've seen the pressure on climate. I mean, we have a crisis now that is linked to the climate crisis. And uh, I believe the gender equality is somehow linked to the same crisis, the climate and the, gen the, 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 you know, the overall crisis. If you don't respect people, if you don't recognize people for what they bring, how can the world, how can the climate, how can the world, the, 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 our earth go well? Because there's no respect. So I, be, I believe everything is linked. And uh, we have, you know, we have a, a responsibility. I mean, to try to tick all those boxes and take it into account because all together we can really change things. Uh, the, the system is changing slowly but surely. And yet we also have to recognize a lot of people are suffering through that crisis from in many aspects, starting with women. A lot of women had to st stop working. Um, I, I was reading an article in Time magazine last week about that. Um, you know, women had to stop working because they were not recognized. They had to miss out work because of the children being home. Uh, employees could not accept that. I mean, even, but in the end, you know, so this kind of employer, I believe, will lose also because at the end, they, you know, this, this, this is not sustainable. This is very short term uh, uh, way to look at things. So, you know, let's be optimistic, you know, let's, <laughs> let's really look up rather than uh, being letting us pull down. And uh, in that respect, we can play our, each one a role. Yeah, these are great words. Let's take it as a chance. Yes. <clears throat> For a better world in all sense of all meanings of <laughs> what it can bring us. Yes. Well, yeah, uh, you know what? We have to conclude soon. And I'd like to uh, I'd like to ask you for some last final concluding words about uh, about responsibility of organizations, what, what it actually brings employers and organizations, what should be their driving force for equal pay? You see, I think there's, um, I will say when they come into the, when they get certified, each company has a different uh, reason for doing it. Huh? I mean, uh, we know companies are, it's not an homogeneous group. They each have a reason to come in. But there's one, and, and I mean, they struggle. Equal salary has one level, it's excellence, it's demanding. And I, I'm sure there are quite a few companies and I've heard them say, oh, if I had known before, you know, I'm not sure I would have, you know, when they were in the middle of it, I'm not sure I would have done it. But there's one common um, uh, point once they are over and that they have received the, the certificate, they feel so proud. This, they really have the feeling they belong to a special group. I call them the pioneers, the brave companies. 
And it is true because a company that has gone through this kind of exercise, you know, for them, it's, it makes a big difference because they are not the same company anymore. They are better. They can claim they have equal pay knowing fully this is true. A, a big uh, contribution uh, nowadays because it's still, we have about a hundred companies that are certified and we have impacted 115,000 women and men so far. But this is really, you know, being proud of having taken a step for the better at the workplace. And I, I think this had, is really important. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish we had uh, many, many pioneers and you are a pioneer, a true pioneer of equal pay. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy that we could have you here today at this conference. Uh, Veronique, tell us where you were connected from exactly in Switzerland, which town? So I'm, I'm close to Lausanne, I'm close to Vevey. Vevey is where Nestlé is based, right? You all remember, you know, all know the chocolate <laughs> place. Yes, sure. So this okay. is where the office of Equal Salary is based, is in Vevey. So we are sending many greetings to you. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you. And uh, I have to say also congratulations to everyone. Uh, first of all, for the organization, uh, organizer, because it's really amazing. And also thank you, Lenka, for doing the interview because, uh, you know, it's so much nicer this way and uh, makes it really going. And uh, so big heart to all of you and, you know, be brave too. <laughs>